Let's talk a little bit about the features and functions of the wrist top computers. First of all, the face is broken down into three main fields. Field one, or the top field. Field two, the center field. Or field three, the lower field. The buttons on this watch operate independently. The upper right is the mode button. Lower right is the numerically scrolling upward button. Lower left numerically will scroll downwards. The upper left, or the select button. Typically, pushing the upper right button will move you across the mode bar, which divides field two and field three. Pressing the mode button one time, we go to the altimeter one more time, the barometer one more time, the compass. Pressing it again, and we simply return to the time mode. Once you're in a main time mode, you can make changes by pressing the upper left or select button. If you hold the select button in for two seconds when you press it, you'll see seconds begin to flash in field three. Press it one more time, minutes will begin to flash. This is where you can make a change. Lower right, numerically upward. Lower left, numerically down. Once you have the minute set, simply press the select button one more time. You can do the same with the hours. Remember, numerically up, numerically down. Pressing the upper left button one more time will give you the choice of 12 or 24 hour time zone, depending on how you'd like to set the unit. Pressing the upper left or select button one more time will take us into the year. The unit has been pre-programmed until 2089. As long as you have the year, the month, the date set correctly, the day in field one will always be correct. Once again, if you need to make a change, scroll numerically downward with the lower left or upward with the lower right. Pressing the select button one more time will allow us to change the month one more time allow us to change the day. Press it one more time. We're back to the seconds where we started. Pressing the upper right button, we're back in the main mode again. Pressing the upper left button one time will take us into the first alarm. You'll see field one on, field two the time, field three al, standing for alarm number one. You have the choice of three alarms in here which you can access by pressing the lower right button. Alarm number two, alarm number three. Reason for three alarms, wake up call, move out call, time to turn back. Holding the upper left button in for two seconds will allow you to turn the alarm either on, denoted in field one, or off. Scroll with the lower right or lower left to on or off. Once you've chosen to turn an alarm on, press the select button one more time, Select the hour you'd like to change. Once again, lower right, lower left. Press it again. Select the minutes. Same, lower right, lower left, however you want to change it. Pressing one more time, you're back. Once you've got the alarm set where you'd like it, merely press the upper right button. You've accepted the change on alarm number one. You can do the same thing for alarm two and alarm three. Once you're happy, press the upper right button and you return to the main time mode. Press the upper left button to get into the stopwatch mode. When you're in the stopwatch mode, you can merely start it by pressing the lower right button. You'll hear a bleep and tenths, and then seconds will begin to accumulate in field one, followed by minutes and hours at the bottom in field three. To stop the watch, merely push the lower right button. To clear the stopwatch, push the lower left, you've cleared it out. Press the select button one time, you'll go into the countdown timer. Press it once, 23 hours, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds will begin to count down. Press it one time, you've shut the countdown timer off. Press the lower left, you've cleared the countdown timer. Now you're back in the main time mode. Scroll across the altimeter by using the mode button. If you look at the mode indicator bar, you'll see an arrow directly below it pointing to altitude. This is the altitude function of the watch. If the altimeter is not set, merely press the upper left button in for two seconds. RE, or reference elevation, will begin to appear. 
you'll see your elevation flashing. If you've taken your information from a topographical map, simply scroll so the numerical value matches. Once you've got the feet, press and select. You've just set the altimeter in the unit. Use the upper right button one time, you're in the main barometer function. Main barometer function, temperature, absolute pressure, time. Temperature at the top is not an ambient temperature. Temperature at the top will be heated up by your body. It's a thermal molded plastic case, so you will offset that. If you need to have an ambient air temperature, simply remove it for 15 to 30 minutes, let the unit set. To change barometric pressure, press the upper left button once, twice, three times. This is sea level. Sea level is somewhat confusing. Actually, it's a misnomer. You're not actually at sea level. Sea level pressure is a computed figure based on temperature, elevation, and humidity. Sea level pressure is what you're given at all reading stations. You don't necessarily hear them say this is the sea level barometer. They merely say this is the barometric pressure. Holding in the upper left button for two seconds, C begins to flash. Numerically scroll down or up to the known sea level pressure. Once you've had it set, you merely accept the change by pressing the mode button. Now you've set the barometer. Remember, you don't have to set the barometer and the altimeter. You're just offsetting the same instrument. Unless, of course, you have an exact known elevation, and you can bring it in to within 10 feet by setting the altimeter. Pressing the upper right button once. You've accepted the change. One more time. Now we're in the main compass mode. Main compass mode, you'll see a cardinal direction at the top or field one south, southwest, southeast. Field two, you'll see the degrees. Field three, you'll see the time. In the outer circumference ring, which is located just within the rotating bezel, you'll see three blocks directly adjacent a single block. That's your north seeking arrow, the single block being the arrow head, the triple blocks being the tail feathers. That'll always seek out north. After the compass has been in the compass mode for a length of time, You'll see three dashes appear across the face. This is the sleep mode. Nothing's wrong with the unit. You simply need to press the lower left button, and you're back in the compass. The reason it goes into sleep is because it's a power drain on the battery. Pressing the upper left button will take you into declination. In order to set the declination on the unit, you'll need to take it from a topographical map, hold in the upper left or select button. West is flashing. Press the lower left or lower right, to east, to west, or to off. Once you have it set, you merely press the upper left one more time, degrees will begin to flash. Scroll in the degrees from your topographical map, press the upper right button to accept the change. You've said declination. Declination is the difference between magnetic north and true north. It will be found on all topographical USGS maps. If you want your wrist top to follow the map, you'll need to set declination. Otherwise, you'll always be pointing towards magnetic north, and the maps are always oriented for true north. Pressing the upper left button one more time, this is the compass calibration mode. This will this will need to be done on a regular basis whenever you've experienced electromagnetic signatures that have overridden the sensor in the unit. Holding in the upper left button, push negative will appear on the face. If you look down, at the negative or scrolling numerically descending button, you'll see three blocks lit. Basically, the unit's walking you right to that button. Just push the negative button. 360 will appear on the face, as will the outer circumference ring fully light up. From this point, you merely rotate the unit 360 degrees, counter or clockwise, until the blocks drop off one by one. Holding the unit as level as possible, which can be facilitated by the bubble level window, Rotate the unit 360 degrees. You can either go clockwise or counterclockwise, and you'll see the outer circumference blocks drop off one by one as you rotate the unit. This may have to be performed one or more times. If the unit's happy, when you got them all the way through, it'll say done in field two. 
If it's not, it'll say either fail or push negative over again, and you'll just have to start over. It's difficult to do this inside a building near a large vehicle or heavy electromagnetic signature. It's best done outside at a trailhead before you're about to use the compass. Once you have done, press the upper right mode button. You're back to compass calibrate. Press it one more time. You're back in the main compass mode. Now the compass is calibrated and ready to roll.